Good morning, Professionals You Trust. My name is Leslie McFadden, and I have the honor of introducing our presenter for the day, Tanya McLaughlin with American Family Insurance. We had Tanya answer three questions so that we can get to know her just a little bit more. The first question is, do you prefer books or films? Books, 100%. They give you a chance to slow down and truly digest an idea. Films are wildly entertaining and great in group settings. But if I'm learning something new or really immersed in someone else's personal experience, I end up rereading sections and even doing research between pages. I have way too many books at home. That's my one indulgence. That's a great answer, Tanya. <laughs> um, the second question that we asked her, do you prefer fruits or vegetables? Her answer, both, because I'm trying to grow them all right now. One of my new favorite things is making the daily rounds with Dax, picking up all the ripe produce. He beats me to most of them and I end up with half eaten strawberries. <laughs> um, the third question, what was your favorite subject in high school? I would have gotten this wrong. Um, her answer is math and French. I'm still practicing both every day. Everyone welcome Tanya McLaughlin. Thank you, Leslie, and good morning, everybody. So we have 10 minutes to talk about the most exciting topic of all insurance. I know you guys woke up and you wanted to learn about black and white insurance contracts. So what I'm gonna share with you today is something that I hope if you've had to use your insurance in the past, um, you've, you've come across claim payouts. And if you haven't had something happen to you before, great knock on wood. Um, unfortunately, the reason that I am in my career is that things do go wrong. And Leslie, the video you shared today about the piper, um, growing up and being afraid to go out there and learn to feed itself, um, learning to have a new perspective and overcome that obstacle and innovate and find a different way to do things is key to our life experience. So we know that things go wrong. We know that we need to adapt and overcome. And one of the way to, ways to do that is to have an insurance policy policy set up that you understand to come to the rescue when something goes wrong. Now, I've talked a lot, a lot on here about the proactive side of that, but I'd like to talk about the other side with claim payouts because when something goes wrong, the steps that we use to move forward are very case by case. And that can leave people feeling a little out to sea because it's so gray, it's not black and white. But truthfully, as far as making sure that things are done right, you have to use that day-to-day -day info to make sure that when you're at a fork in the road, you're going down the right path. So what I'm gonna share with you guys today is a couple universal truths as far as how insurance policy works to help guide you during that conversation. So we're going to start with something called perils. Um, perils are just another fancy word for things that go wrong. It could be a plane crashing into your house. It could be a tree falling on your house. It can be someone breaking out your window to get your stuff. But perils are how we categorize the black and white list of things that go wrong that insurance either will or won't pay for. So this is really important that you understand perils because out on the insurance market, you think, hey, I'm buying auto insurance. I'm buying home insurance, it's the same, no matter which company I go with. I get to make some choices as to customizations, but it's pretty much the same. It's actually drastically different, but the nice thing is I don't have to teach you guys to be licensed insurance advisors today. It falls in one of three categories. So perils and the way that insurance is written falls into categories called basic, broad, and special. And they go in that exact order. Basic gives you the shortest list of things that go wrong that you can get a claim check for, okay? Basic means basic. So it's really basic things like a house fire, smoke damage from that fire. I mentioned vandalism, so that could be someone breaking into steel things or just tagging the wall. Those sorts of things are included in basic coverage. Broad just extends on that. So it includes all those things plus a couple extras. Like I mentioned, falling objects. Falling objects is considered that airplane going into your home that I talked about. But notice that wind, storm, and hail is on the list no matter which you choose. So a question I get a lot in the fall and winter is, if my tree falls on my neighbor's house or my neighbor's tree falls on my house, is that covered? Well, the answer is yes. It doesn't matter what kind of insurance policy you have, windstorm 
a tree falling on a home is covered, okay? But it does make a difference whether you have basic or broad, whether a tree or sorry, an airplane flying into your home, which unfortunately I keep mentioning because I've had that claim, uh, water damage is the next big one. Having a plumbing or a piece of plumbing burst and have water everywhere is not something that's covered unless you have a broad policy. So that is something that can easily be excluded just based on the type of policy you're being given. Finally, there's something called special. And this one flips it on its head. So rather than having a specific list of things that are covered and everything else is not, special covers things that are instant, accidental, and catastrophic. These items here are showing you that there's just a short list of exclusions that exist on that policy. So when you're out on the market, what you really want to look for is a special policy, because that way you're looking at a short list of things that aren't paid for that you can find solutions for rather than saying, oh, I feel good. You know, these five, these 10 things are covered and I'm just not going to worry about the rest. It makes the list long of what you need to find solutions for. Okay, so if there's one takeaway from this slide, please remember that insurance is meant to cover things that are instant, accidental, and catastrophic. Best thing I have in a nutshell there is that water damage example where you have a pipe burst, happens instantaneously, you didn't do it intentionally, you didn't take a sawzall to it, and catastrophic means it's not just a five or thousand dollar puddle, we're talking about maybe ten or twenty thousand dollars worth of damage between the home, your stuff inside, and maybe you staying somewhere else. Co-insurance. I'm going to keep this one brief, but this is one that can really trip people up when it comes to claim payments. Co-insurance, please don't conflate this with health insurance. That is a completely different animal. Co-insurance talks about the level of insurance you carry on your home compared to what you should insure it for. Now, we think about that a little bit on the proactive side saying, hey, I had my home insured for a million, but now it's worth 1.5. I feel like I should increase that. Some people take that action and some people don't. Well, here's what happens come claim time if that change isn't made. So I'm going to walk you through this calculator, okay, top to bottom. Co-insurance, like I said, has to do with how far off are you from how the home should have been covered to how it was covered. So this is a claim saying 1.4 million is what the home is covered for, okay? Very normal, you buy a house, you get it evaluated, you buy the 1.4 on your policy, but then boom, two, three years later, it's appreciated in our area about $500,000, okay? So that's where it's saying it should be insured to 1.9, and whoops, today's when the claim happened. Most policies come with an 80% co-insurance clause, meaning that you have to insure your home at at least 80% of what it should be insured for, or we can't write the policy because we know you're underinsuring yourself and that's going to cause problems. Um, American Family uses 100%. Some companies like mine do that, but industry standard is 80%. What that means for this customer is that now your new percentage, the max payout you can get with a claim check is going to be 92% of what the loss is because that's the discrepancy between what you should have been insured for and what you were insured for. So at the bottom, I'm gonna break down if that whole home burns down and we are rebuilding it from the ground up, we needed 1.9 million, but we only have 1.4. So the loss there in what you could have gotten and needed is $500,000 that was missed out on by being underinsured. And that's co-insurance taking action on a claim payout. Next one, partial loss. All that means is that rather than completely rebuilding the home, we're fixing it. So that can be a kitchen fire. That can be a third story water damage claim. And that comes out to 120,000. Well, the house was underinsured. You would think, well, it's under the 1.4 million. So why does it matter? That 92% is why it matters. You're only insured to 92%. So that means that rather than 120,000, you're only getting 109,000. And rather than just having a thousand dollar deductible, suddenly you're paying out of pocket a little over 10 grand. Okay, that's co-insurance. Final thing, valuation. And I promise this one short. A lot of you have probably heard this before. There's a big difference between replacement cost or RCV versus actual cash value, ACV. 
very easy to understand the difference. Replacement cost means that if you're going to rebuild your house tomorrow, you're going to get a claim check for the current cost of labor, current cost of materials. It happens to cost 50 grand a day, so that is what your check will be, 50 grand. Okay. Actual cash value says, okay, it's 50 grand today to fix or rebuild your home, but your home is 20 years old. So we have a chart. We're going to go ahead and figure out how much that depreciation equates to, and we're going to take that away from your claim check along with your deductible. So that makes a big difference. And what I wanted to mention is that they do that by individual system. So you can have maybe a 20-year-old home and a five-year-old roof they're gonna go through each system individually and add that up. So you're getting dinged on depreciation from every corner of that house. So a lot of my major competitors out there that are similar to American Family do offer actual cash value policies. So please, please, please watch for replacement cost verbiage in your policy. You want it there. It's not expensive to add and it's not hard to find. Finally, is the first claim payout my only payout? top question I get. No, it's not, especially if you are in the replacement cost category. What will happen is if you have a loss tomorrow, say that you have a power surge, so your wall is scorched, you have to go live somewhere else, you have people coming in to get bids and your things were damaged. Um, what will happen is they'll figure out the actual cash value of that loss and you'll get that as a first claim check. And as you start repairing and as you start rebuying your things, they will ask for receipts for reimbursement. That's how we figure out what current cost is. And they'll issue you claim checks to reimburse that amount right up to what that current cost ends up being. So number one takeaway I'd like to give you guys today is if you're in the midst of a claim, aside from making sure you have someone to advocate for you, is don't worry about that initial claim amount. It's not necessarily the only one. I have a lot of people get very scared and very worked up over that. Make sure that if you're getting a claim check, just clarify whether that's the final one. Nine times out of 10, it's not. So finally, you guys know me and my team. We're licensed in multiple states. We speak multiple languages, and we are here to be your team of insurance experts to walk you through this sort of thing when it happens to you. Thanks so much.